the story of AAC, Asian Aviation Center. It's very inspirational, very interesting. It sounds as if a chapter of Richard Branson's life story. Ah. Could you <laughs> could you care to share it with us, please? Well, I'm uh, very much influenced by Richard Branson's life Are story. You? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've read all his books. Anyway, actually, it's an interesting uh, thing what happened. I was the uh, deputy chairman of Lion Air, and we were doing extremely well with uh, 18 flights a day to Jaffna, and um, uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful operation going. And once uh, Friday, I wanted to fly my, my family for a holiday to um, China Bay, to uh, Trincomalee. And as I was born in the plane, I was in the hot sun, and although we were flying 18 flights a day, we did not have a hangar, mm -hmm. and not, neither did we have a, a decent office. So I saw this hangar, all these hangars, and the first time I saw it from that angle. And I said, what are those, who owns those hangars? And somebody said, this is a, a flying school, and it's owned by uh, uh, a gentleman. Uh, the name of the company was CDE Aviation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy just mentioned, it might be for sale, sir. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm coming back on Sunday night. Find out and let me know. Mm -hmm. As I landed, the guy told me that it is for sale, mm -hmm. but it was being, all, uh, maybe it's already sold. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went to the owner, mm -hmm. and he told me that the uh, people from America, from Florida, had come, and they were staying at the Galadari Hotel, mm -hmm. and they were, they were purchasing the, the, the company, mm -hmm. but they were... They were still in negotiations. Yeah, in negotiating the price. Mm -hmm. and he wanted X amount, and they didn't want to pay that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my father always told me that uh, if there's only one thing available and you want it, yeah. you've got to take it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I immediately um, uh, valued it in my mind yeah. without any knowledge of what was inside this hangar. <laughs> and you haven't I, seen that. I hadn't even been into the hangar, but I knew there was a helicopter and I saw a couple of small aircraft. So I said, I told the, I told the owner, this is not worth what you, what you had mentioned, mm -hmm. it's worth a little more. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a price that he, I gave him an offer that he couldn't refuse. Yes. And uh, I uh, quoted a higher price, mm -hmm. and I sealed the deal immediately. And then I ran to Lion Air and asked. I had no money. You had no money. At I had all. no money. I mean, I did not have money to buy this yes. company. So I went to my company, Lion Air, very prosperous company, and I had a you meeting. You took a chance. You took. <clears throat> yes, I took a chance, but I thought that my my company, my other company, yeah, Lion Air, would would support me. Yeah. And uh, all those wonderful people, uh, they all decided. They gave me the thumbs down. Okay. It's uh, foolish. And one of my directors from America sent me a, 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 a fax that I still keep which says, you're stupid for buying it, for trying to do that. So they were out of the picture. So I ran to my other company, Film Locations, mm. and managed to get a small down payment. Mm. And this all happened the same day. Okay. Ran back to the owner, gave him the cashier's check, shook hands. Okay. Now he says, okay, go and take over the thing. Technically, you are the owner. Technically, I'm the owner, but yeah. he, I asked for 60 days to pay okay. the balance. Okay. Uh, and and I the had, down payment was just a fraction of the whole oh, amount. I know, it's embarrassing to tell you how no, much okay. it is. So... <laughs> So then I, uh, I'm wondering how am I going to pay for this thing, and he says, go and take over, because he had finished with the company. Mm. And uh, I said, I felt so embarrassed, because I only made such a small down payment, how can I go in there? As the owner. As the owner. You know, so I, and eventually I did go in there, and I said, lo and behold, there are two helicopters. I thought there was only one, <laughs> okay. but I knew I had made a good deal. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, as time went on, there was a Japanese gentleman came down here to invest in some other companies, mm -hmm. and he used one of, the, one of my helicopters, mm -hmm. my helicopters, yes. <laughs> my, and then <laughs> Uh, then uh, he came and told me he likes to go into partnership because he needs a helicopter for his work. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we took those two helicopters away from the company mm -hmm. and formed a different company. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we had a 50-50 uh, uh, agreement mm -hmm. uh, with two helicopters. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he gave me almost three-quarter of the amount okay. that I had to pay for the purchase. Within the 60 days time period. Oh, within 30 days. Right. So I ran with the check, gave him that, and the balance was stuff that they owed banks. I took over those payments. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the interesting and the funniest part is, now I am the owner of this big hangar and this company, and my little, my big lion here mm -hmm. uh, has no hangar, <laughs> and they have to come to me yes. and ask me, can we rent some space? Yes. I said, yes, but very expensive. <laughs> So anyway, I played around with them, and then uh, it was getting ridiculous. So I sold half the company to Lion Air mm -hmm. for much more than I had paid for it. Mm -hmm. So I made a sizable profit, uh -huh. and then I paid the guy, I paid the owner off, mm -hmm. and then uh, on, time? Uh, on on time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, on time. Mm -hmm. And then the um, Lion Air came to me, the other board of directors, the board of directors said it's ridiculous owning half. <laughs> can we can we buy into the other half? I said, of course you can. Mm -hmm. 
and then I sold them the other half mm -hmm. at a at a very good price, mm -hmm. uh, and kept the, my helicopter out of the transaction mm -hmm. as my personal chopper. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, my one of my planes was shot down mm -hmm. uh, during the conflict, and we lost the plane and the passengers, and flying was banned. So I was unable to keep the helicopters. Yeah, AOG aircraft on ground because it's not practical, financially practical. So I had to sell those two helicopters, sell my helicopter, and the Japanese guy sold his helicopter. Okay. And uh, here I am enjoying a flying school and an aerospace engineering college and making my movies and quite content. content. To life. Yes. Nikhil Chandran Ratnam, the veteran film producer and director, was a serviceman who served in the U.S. Army. He has had a very colorful and an eventful life. His wife Nehara is just as colorful. She rides horses, flies aircraft, and runs a flying school. Nehara, good to have you on the show. So your line of work, we'll talk about that first. You run an aviation school. How did that happen? I was uh, always in the marketing uh, side, that was my field. And I was like a married channel. And uh, after a while, I said it was high time that I wanted to do the business and take over because there was a need for it. And uh, from then on, it was just a general, you know, quite natural transition. And uh, here I am. And uh, there's a story about you riding a horse from Baunia to Jaffna. Yeah. Such an expedition. Can we share the story with the audience? Yeah. That was in uh, 2002, right? 2002. Uh, 2002, soon after the peace accord was signed. Um, probably, I think, we were one of the first, uh, I was one of the se first signalists to go into the Vanya, which is still held by the LTT. And uh, myself, another British girl, we rode uh, on horseback uh, uh, from Baunia to Jaffna. And it took us four nights, uh, five days, we slept on the roads. We ate what was available and um, yeah, we just began the trip. We uh, called it uh, Peace for Children. Mm -hmm. It was a charity ride for the children of the world. And uh, I must say, we collected about Chandran Ratnam believes that one should take whatever the journey has to offer, nurture it along the way and never look back. 
He lives on his words that nobody but you can make your dreams come true. Until we meet again next week on another episode of All About Success. Good night.